Hey, this is Phil Leinberger, and this is a really nice example of an endodontic case where we can use CBCT intraoperatively to help find calcified canals. So here's the initial PA, and it's not a care stream uh, intraoral sensor. I'm not sure where it's from, but this case started off at the general dentist, and you can see there is a radiolucency here. And we can also see that the canal is actually calcified or at least partially calcified. We can see the chamber here and they started their access and you can see that here on the second PA that was taken. They lost their way a little bit and really couldn't find the canal so they eventually decided to send the patient to the endodontist. And the endodontist saw the PAs and elected to take a CBCT. So on the CBCT they actually took a 5 by 5 field of view on the 8100 3D. The scan was taken at 150 microns, although 75 microns could have been taken. And we're going to go through the software a little bit to kind of show you what was done. Now, remember to go through the entire scan edge to edge, diagnose everything before you focus on the area of interest. We're not going to do that here for the sake of this video, but just a reminder. So we'll start off in our curve slicing tab. We can turn on our planes just to see where we are, and we can begin creating our panoramic curve. And this is a nice overall perspective where I can move my slice all the way out to the facial. And you can see my red line, my red line over here. This is where I am over here. And I'm just slicing to the palette. And just getting an overall perspective of what's happening, we can see the access on number nine. Continue out to the facial. We can see the actual canal. And this just gives me a little bit of an overall perspective with what's happening. We can now move to the oblique slicing tab and let's go ahead and slice through inferior superiorly and get an overview of what's happening in that area as well. We can see the area of low density surrounding the apex of number nine. Slicing superiorly, we can see the actual canal. And we can see the actual access, the end of the access. Okay, so what next? Let's use my mouse wheel as a button and I'm going to push down on the button to center all of my views on the area that I'm pointing to, like that. Now make sure your slices are aligned to the long axis. We can see over here, this is already aligned nicely, but if it were turned, if you focus on my right hand view, my sagittal view, we don't want our slice looking like this. We can move it to the long axis, and now we can see things much, much better. I can, uh, I can change to zoom and zoom in a little bit further too. And the same goes for our coronal slice. If I look at my purple coronal view, if this were not associated with the long axis, I can change that in order to see things very, very clearly in this view. By the way, you'll notice I'm going back and forth between slide and zoom very easily just by selecting Control A. Shout out to Veronica, one of our trainers, for that little tip. Okay, so how do we use this scan to help us find the canal clinically? Well, we can see in our sagittal view, I'm actually just moving my mouse wheel back and forth, we can see the canal where it exits. We can see the actual area of low density here. We can see that the GP's access was to the palate, where the actual canal was a little bit more towards the facial. We can also see in this view, here's our canal. I'm now slicing back and forth. We can see that the access was starting to veer off to the distal. And fortunately, they stopped heading in that direction because we can see here the actual canal was mesial to their access. So now all you have to do is go to the most facial aspect of your access here, where we can see the actual canal begins, and go to the most mesial aspect of our access as well, and we should be able to find the canal very easily. And that's exactly what the endodontist did, and I'll show you the final PA, which was taken on a CareStream 6200 sensor.